Big day of packing today. Big trip coming up. This trip is going to take a little bit more planning because the whole family's coming along. More baggage. I think we have like five bags for three people. Today is a travel day. Very long day, but fun day, fun family day. There, there they are up there. Travel days are always give you time to think, do a little bit of work, but mostly they just make you tired. Anyway, it was a very long travel day. I'm glad it's over. Glad to be back here in the office. Uh, today, what I want to have a look at real quick is a stock that I think people are still way too bullish on as far as the near term is concerned. Uh, and that is Amazon.com. Uh, Amazon.com, of course, last Friday uh, dropped after earnings. So I want to just have a real quick look with you guys in a chart, show you what I think is going on here in the near term. So let's look at the chart of Amazon.com real quick here and I think there's no reason to overcomplicate things. Uh, but the reality is that these, uh, this most recent run up basically off of those February lows of Amazon.com uh, have basically come on a lack of new enthusiasm and momentum. You can see the MACD oscillator here, which basically has given us a lower high versus those 2015 highs. If we now zoom in a little bit closer on this, and I don't know how well you guys can, I hope you guys can see this. You can see we actually had a failed uh, rally attempt last week. And of course, after earnings, uh, uh, that's actually the price that you're seeing on a weekly basis, this is a weekly chart. And you can see the stock is starting to uh, you know, look weaker and weaker. It's starting to break some support, initial support. And so we have a very well-defined area to lean against on the short side if anyone wants to try this around 840 on that on the upside. So that's what a to me a qualified bearish reversal looks like. If we look at all of this on a daily chart, you can see last Friday's price action. Friday last Friday was October the 28th. You can see what happened is the the stock actually gapped below and remains thus far below its 50 day moving average. That's this yellow line. And it's actually now below this moving average on a on a daily closing basis for the First time since, uh, let's see, what was that? I guess March of this 2016 year. So I think this was a meaningful gap down after the stock uh, exhausted itself. Also on the daily chart, you can see the same type of price action here. We continue to have an ascent in price, but um, the momentum uh, to the, to, to, on the upside continued to deteriorate. We made another uh, lower high. So I think Amazon.com here, again, structurally, no no uh, concern about the long term. I think its stock is a much better buy if it uh, can get back uh, into, let's call it the 700 area or so. It's probably, a, it's probably a better spot to ultimately pick up the stock. Again, if we go back in the weekly chart just for uh, one more second, you'd see that that 700 area, you know, plus or give or take 10 bucks or so would get it back to its 50 week moving average, which is also roughly its 200 day moving average, the 200 day moving average being the red line here on this chart. So anywhere between, let's call it 690 and 710 or so is probably a better spot for the stock to get back to for better support.